Audio Jungle. All right. So, hello everyone. Uh, myself Narendra Singh Maurya. So, guys, today we'll see Kate uh, Aerospace 2024 Aircraft Structure Solutions. And uh, here, <clears throat> the first question I'm taking. Uh, the question is: the figure shows uh, plots of two yield locus for an isotropic material where sigma one and sigma two are the principal stresses, and sigma y is the yield stress in uniaxial tension right which of the following statement is are correct okay so uh, here option here i have uh, written now for this problem see uh, theory of failure chapter in gate aerospace we had seen uh, during the preparation uh, so many methods are there okay uh, in theory of failure but here we have to talk as per given uh, uh, this option, uh, basically uh, Triska criteria and uh, a Vaughan mission. Okay, so graphical point of view like Triska and uh, Vaughan mission. So there I had explained uh, in case of the uh, Triska basically. So Triska criteria. So so for this i had explained the basically this triska criteria will be used for the ductile material and second very important point i explained there that graphical representation for the triska criteria is what hexagon okay it's a hexagon now so if you check this is what this dotted one this is nothing but triska very simple question and one mission criteria one misses uh, criteria for this also i had explained this is best suitable for uh, the uh, ductile material this is best uh, suitable for the ductile material okay ductile material and the graphical representation of the Van Mises uh, criteria is what octahedral. What is that? Octahedral, which is nothing but this outer one. So, this is nothing but one mission. One Mises. So, here we have to pick that option. So, criteria P is nothing but what? It's a one Mises and criteria q which is nothing but hexagon this is nothing but triska now you can check the correct answer criteria q represents the triska criteria check q is what triska criteria yeah this first option is correct yes or no this first one is correct here first option is correct Trista, uh, criteria q represents one minus no because it is already uh, triska criteria as i have mentioned criteria p represents triska criteria no criteria p represents the one minus okay so this two so what are the correct options r a and d this is the answer all right now moving for the next question so in this next uh, question see the simple question here they said in the figure shown below the magnitude of internal force in member bc is okay it's a fill in the blank where is the member bc this is the member bc all right now for such type of question if you remember trust members okay in mechanics we had seen trust members so for this question how uh, to solve simple you take the free body diagram of this okay free body diagram of this and they are asking what is the load what is the force in member bc 
if you check it is a a at a it is hinged it is hinged at a one force this force is what given in this direction so better i will take the member here simply the free body diagram check and here this force is what acting which is nothing but obviously 100 newton so this member because it is at hinged at this point a once this force will be applied in this direction so this member will try to go in this direction yes or no this member will try to shift in this direction so what will happen to the member bc what will happen to member to this member will try to resist this motion in this direction this this will be the direction of this member ad because of this 100 newton force because it is acting with vertical 30 degree angle so this member ad will try to move in this direction because it is hinged at point a so what this member bc will try to do this member try to pull this member in this direction so basically once it is moving in this direction so this member bc will have a direction force in this direction and this force is nothing but f bc simple so i can say this is the point a okay about this a this is the hinge and here one force will be acting in this direction bc and this direction of the force in bc will be like this why i told you once this force will be acting at point d so this member ad will try to move in this direction hence this will be it is like a, a clamped okay so it will try to uh, pull back so that force will be in this direction now you will take the uh, component the horizontal component and obviously vertical component similarly because it is what from vertical it is 30 degree so two forces you will have a two components one will be 100 because this is the angle here so this will be the cos component 100 cos 30 and this is what 100 sin 30 now for this we do not know force but this triangle if you check so this is like you see check this so <coughs> this is nothing but we'll go step by step solution so it will be more clear to you okay and now this is nothing but 0.5 now if you calculate this angle theta so it's nothing but tan theta is equal to 0.5 by means what is the theta it's a 45 degree right now if you check here in this previous case so if this angle is what 45 so this is also 45 now resolve this force so this is what f bc cos 45 and here also this is what fbc sin 45 this vertical direction now all the forces if you check here in this case so uh, i can take this this is point a okay and this is 100 newton this will be 100 30 degree in vertical direction so it's 100 cos 30 this is 100 sin 30 next you go the force for this also fbc fbc this is nothing but 45 degree from vertical so fbc sin 40 and here also one more component will come fbc 
cos 45 so basically 100 cos 30 if you see this point a now this and this length you will write here this is what 0.5 meter and here this is also check length is 0.5 here it is given now for this diagram because this is what hinge support so if you take moment taking moment about a so whatever the moment about a it will be zero because it's a hinge support now if you check the forces so basically forces are see this fbc cos 45 this force and this 100 cos 30 because it is uh, along the uh, points wherever the moment you are taking the same in the same actually you can say that axis is what same for that point so we are not getting any perpendicular distance so definitely moment will not be there because of these forces so only two forces we have one force is here this force and this force so these two forces will give the moment about point a so 100 sine 30 what is the perpendicular dis distance this total will be the perpendicular distance hence 0.5 plus 0.5 it is 1 meter okay this is the you say about the point a this 100 sin 30 will give the clockwise moment hence it is positive and this fbc about the point a it will give the moment and perpendicular distance will be 0.5 so and it will be the anti-clockwise moment about point a hence it is minus fbc sin 45 what is the perpendicular distance it's 0.5 equal to 0 now <coughs> if you solve this then what you will get check 100 sin 30 into 1 will be the same value and this is nothing but fbc sin 45.5 what is the FBC? It's a hundred sin thirty divided by point five. If you solve this value, so <coughs> FBC it's a sine or cos. right sign no? ah. so same value sign 45 it is we just write the value so let me check 100 into you also can calculate sine 30 divided by 0.5 okay and divided by sine 45 so I'm getting 141, 141.42 Newton. This is the value. It's a fill in the blank. So that correct answer is 141.42. Four two. They said round off one decimal places. So one forty one point four two. If you round off it, then you will get one forty one point four newton. This is the value, right? This is the answer for this. Now we'll be moving for the next question. Okay, <clears throat> this question is the obviously vibration question. Once you read automatically, you will understand. Okay. See the equation of motion for two degree of freedom, two D, eh? two degree of freedom, undamped spring mass system. The two equation they have given equation one and equation two, where m and k represents mass and stiffness respectively in corresponding SI unit, and x one, x two are degree of freedom. The larger of the two natural frequencies is given by W is equal to omega is equal to alpha root k by m radian per second okay the value of alpha is round up to two decimal places okay so if you go for this a particular problem so this is what two degree of freedom so even though when 
I had explained uh, the vibration. So two degree of freedom problems are linear problems. So I told you one master formula. So I will give the brief of it and then directly that master formula will use and will get the result. So it will little bit it will take time better. I will go step by step so it will be more clear to everyone. So I had explained when I had explained two degree of freedom. So what I had explained check. <coughs> This is the spring mass system, okay. Then in short, I'm just explaining this so you may be able to connect this easily. All right. Okay, I had explained K1, K2, K3, M1, M2, this is what C1, C2, C3, here if you check the displacement x1 and x2 for two, two degree of freedom this was the uh, basically configuration spring mass system with damper okay but fortunately in our problem they had said it is the undamped uh, so undamped means if you write for this so for Undamped system C1 is equal to 0, C2 is equal to 0, and C3 is equal to 0. All right, fine. Now, if you recall the lectures, what we had done during the preparation, so you will get that for this we had got the equation, and what was the master equation, if you remember? It was general solution or you can say general equation for this two degree of freedom two degree of freedom undamped system i always used to tell to the students please remember this master formula so any kind of two degree of freedom problems definitely will able to solve so if you check this equation was what it was m1 m2 omega to power 4 minus in bracket k1 plus k2 it was m2 plus k2 plus k3 it was m1 then comes to omega square plus k1 plus k2 k2 plus k3 minus k2 square is equal to 0 this is the general equation okay for two degree of freedom for undamped system if damper will be there so definitely uh, c1 c2 c3 term will also come okay so i always used to tell to the students you remember this equation only okay it will be very helpful for the solution of any kind of the problem now check now what two equation they have given we'll write this two equation it is nothing but let me open in mobile it is just wait okay so they have given equation mx1 
डबल डॉट प्लस टू के एक्स वन के एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो एम एक्स टू डबल डॉट माइनस के एक्स वन टू के एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो टू इक्वेशन दे हैव गिवन वन एंड टू राइट नाउ With our standard equation, with our uh, master equation, we have to compare this. So, what we'll get? Check. Now, k1 plus k2. Ah, uh, with our equation, it is nothing but <coughs> they have given the value of x1 and x2, which is nothing but right. For the given spring and mass system, what will be the equation for this? This is the general solution. What will be the equation for this? Okay, if it is undamped system, so equation will be what? M one x one double dot okay plus k one plus k two x one. Minus k two x two is equal to zero, and it is m two x two double dot minus k two x one plus k two x one plus k two k three x two. Equal to zero, and for this equation, because this is the equation you got for this mass spring mass system, this is the equation two equation you have now, okay? And for this equation now, we have the general solution, and where is the general solution? This is the general solution. Okay, two things you need to remember. Because we considered it is undamped system, so C1, C2, C3 becomes zero. So in this equation, we are not getting C1, C2, C3. Okay. So now the equation for this, you got these two equation, and for these two equation, this is what general solution. These three things you need to remember for the two degree of freedoms. Now this is the equation for this spring mass uh, system. Now you compare with our given in problems whatever the equation they have given if you compare this two so now this is given and we have equation for two degree of freedom undamped what are these two equation just now i have written you just take and just write the comparison so it is m1 x1 double dot plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 zero and m2 x2 double dot Minus k two x one k two k three into x two equal to zero. This is the equation. Okay, this is the equation for two degree of freedom undamped system. Now you compare there. Once you compare, check what is the k one plus k two. You are getting here k one plus k two is equal to what? It's a two k. Check. And instead of k two plus k three, compare this k two plus k three. It is also two k. Check compare k two. K two is nothing but k. And uh, here k two x one. Okay, done. uh one more thing m1 check m1 is nothing but m similarly m2 is also m 
Now your problem is solved. See, I am taking by because I am writing each and every step. So it's a step by step solution. Otherwise, directly if you are writing an exam, so immediately you compare and write the data and you just start. Now, whatever after comparison you got this value, now you have to put this in your general solution. This is what general solution. This general solution will give the value of omega. They are asking that. Understood? Simple steps you have to do. Two degree of freedom system, spring mass system you have to, for this you have to write the equation. Okay. And for this equation, this is the general solution. In the problem, they have given these two equations. You compare these two equations with our standard equation. Check we are in our standard equation, we are having k1 plus k2, but here it is 2k. So you compare k1 plus k2 is nothing but 2k. Similarly here, k2 plus k3, the x2 coefficient, this is the x2 coefficient is 2k. So k2 plus k3, you got 2k. Similarly, check k2 here. Uh, in our standard equation, this is minus k2. What is minus k2? It is minus k. So minus minus cancel out, k2 becomes k. Check this is m1 in our standard equation, m1. So m1 is what m? This is m2. m2 is what m? All value I have written. Now I will put in my standard equation. This is the standard equation. Right. So now we will go for the solution now. I will do little bit fast because you have to write the data only. K2, K3, it's M1 square plus K1 plus K2, K2 plus K3, K2 square is equal to 0. Now write all the value here. Once you keep all the value then what you will get m1 m2 m1 is equal to m2 and that is m so it becomes m square w power 4 in bracket what is k1 plus k2 it's 2k so it's nothing but 2k what is m2 it is m 2k m k2 plus k3 is what again 2k what is m1 it's m okay omega square plus what is k1 plus k2 it's a 2k what is k2 plus k3 it's a 2k what is k2 k2 is nothing but k so it is k square okay so it becomes m square omega to power 4 minus 4km omega square okay plus 2k 2k 4k square minus k square it is 3k square is equal to 0. Now, <coughs> you also, if you want to write, you can write omega to power 4 minus, it's uh, 4 k by m, just divide by m square, so mm cancel out, so it will be k by m, you just take in bracket, omega square plus, okay, it's uh, 3 k by m square, actually you have divided by m square both side now this value you got now you just assume because it's omega to power 4 so it is difficult to solve so you can take omega to power 4 is equal to uh, what you can write or you just uh, consider that omega is square no? so it will be better for you for the calculation point of view it will be easy okay so it's uh, omega square is equal to what x or uh, okay you can take that no problem so it will be what x square minus 4k by m x plus 3k by m square is equal to yes or no now <coughs> because this is the coordinating equation so two value you will get that is x1 and x2 yes or no so <coughs> You can compare with this ax square bx plus c is equal to 0. Now x1 and x2 you will get here. So I will write here. I will make point. I have elaborated this. So it, it has taken time also as well as space. Anyway, so what will be the x1? x1 will be minus 
b plus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a right so what is x1 you check it is nothing but b what is the b it's a uh, minus uh, 4k by m so it becomes uh, basically plus here yes or no because one more thing you need to remember in this problem they said uh, in the problem itself they said the larger of the two natural frequency another value if you take uh, so that value will be smaller because you have to put minus sign if you write x2 then it will be what minus b minus b square minus 4ac by 2a so which one is larger this one is larger value so you take x1 value okay x1 what is the value of uh, minus b uh, b value so b is 4k by m minus minus plus so it becomes 4 k by m okay you are taking larger value so this is what plus in bracket it's 4k by m it becomes 16 k by m square minus 4 a what is the a a is 1 c is nothing but 3 k by m ah, so this 4 into 3 it becomes 12 better i will write directly 12 what is the c it's 3 k m this value so 4 into 3 12 k by m square okay in root complete root divided by 2 what is a a is 1 now if you solve this then what you will get x1 4k by m 16k by m minus 12k by m it is again 4k by m you take root then it will be 2k by m 2k by m plus 4k by m it becomes 6k by m okay divided by 2 it becomes 3k by m what is the x x is nothing but omega square no? x is nothing but omega square somewhere you have written here this so now what is the omega it's root of x1 or it's a root of 3k by m they ask what is the value of constant alpha so hope you understood what is the alpha alpha is nothing but root 3 simple so what is the alpha alpha is nothing but root 3 you keep here so it's a round off of two decimals so better you don't write this you write 1.73 because what is the root 3 it is 1.73 3 2 so if you round off this this will be the value 1.73 all right all right now check this so here what we have in this problem consider the plane strain field given by epsilon xx 10 xy square epsilon yy minus 5x square y and gamma xy is axy in bracket 2x minus y where a is constant and gamma xy is the engineering shear strain the value of the value of constant a for the strain field to be compatible is round up to one decimal this is also fill in the blank what you will do in this problem see it this problem is again it's very simple what you have to do simple in the problem itself they have mentioned a for the strain field to be compatible is so for the 3d stress uh, plane strain system uh, we know what is the compatibility equation for the plane strain only one compatibility equation will be there and what it is if you remember so uh, for plane strain system compatibility
equation is what is the compatibility equation if you remember it's nothing but dou square epsilon xx divided by dou y square okay plus dou square epsilon y by divided by dou x square dou square gamma x y divided by dou x dou y this is our compatibility equation now our pro problem becomes simpler how see epsilon xx we have what is epsilon xx it's nothing but 10 x y square we have to take the derivative to dou epsilon xx divided by dou y first what will get 20 x y again dou square epsilon xx divided by dou square y what will get it's a 20 x similarly we have epsilon y y what is that minus 5 x square y what we have to write dou epsilon y y divided by dou x what is that minus 10 x y again dou square epsilon y y divided by dou x square what is that it is minus 10 y y another is what gamma x y it is a x y okay better i will write here no problem <coughs> What is the gamma x y? It is a x y in bracket 2 x minus y or we can open it a 2 a x square y minus x y square check the compatibility equation first you have to differentiate this gamma x y with respect to y so what you will write dou of gamma x y divided by dou y what you will get so you will get 2x square minus 2axy again you have to differentiate this with respect to x so differentiate this what you will get 4ax minus 2ay this value will get yes or no now we'll put these all value huh? whatever we got here all the value will put in compatibility equation simple simple only the problem is what very simple the thing is only time consuming huh? so time consuming you can say or oh, sorry this value you just put in compatibility equation no? this is your compatibility equation you just satisfied with this so what you will have 20 x i will write here it's a 20 x minus 10 y is equal to 4 a x minus 2ay <coughs> anything anything uh, you can try hit and trial also you can do it's your choice you can check this what should be the value of a what should be the value of a that put if you put a in, in this right side so this left side value you should get so uh, directly it's a seeming only if a is equal to 5 you put uh, a is equal to 5 hmm? So you will get your equation simple it's a hit and trial otherwise i will tell you another method also a is equal to phi so what you will get if you keep here a is equal to phi then what value you will get 4a it was 20x minus a is what phi hence it 10 y check this value you are getting 
otherwise you take the x coefficients to, it is 20 both side x coefficient is what 20 and x coefficient here it is nothing but 4a so is y similarly take y coefficient so what is the y coefficient it's minus 10 what is the y coefficient it's minus 2a so what is a it is 5 so overall what is the value of a it's nothing but 5 done so this uh, the value they of a they had asked a is constant yes and they are asking what should be the value of a for the strain field to be compatible so if to be compatible means what it should satisfy compatibility equation and for the plane strain i already have explained nicely in the lectures that for the plane strain this is the compatibility equation simple only all right the state of stress at a point is caused by two separate loading cases. One of them produces a pure uniaxial tension. Pure uniaxial tension means there is no shear stress, the x direction, and one produces a pure uniaxial compression along the y direction. Where is x? This is the x. So along the x, it is 10 Newton per mm square, which is nothing but in tension, and along y, it is in compression so ultimately if you check for this uh, i can take this there is no shear stress so along x this is nothing but tension like this okay it's uh, 10 newton per mm square both side obviously and along y it, it is compression they are saying they had taken separately so i have taken in single diagram 10 newton per mm square and this is what 10 newton mm square they said pure <coughs> pure uniaxial tension you take it is sigma 1 okay and for the tension obviously it will be uh, not sigma 1 they had given the direction it is sigma x dash okay it is obviously 10 uh, plus why because it is tension right 10 newton per mm square pure uniaxial compression in y direction obviously it will be compression so minus overall for both cases they said pure hence we do not have any shear stress x dash y becomes zero right this is the outcome you got now we'll go for the problems the sum of maximum and minimum principal stress for the resultant is state of stress. For the same state of stress caused by the both loading acting simultaneously. It is, here it is acting simultaneously means both are acting for the same uh, body. Okay. Now they are saying uh, the sum of uh, maximum and minimum principal stresses. Okay. So we will write the principal stress formula yes or no so obviously so here principal stress principal stresses better i will say because we have maximum and minimum two stresses we have sigma max which is also called sigma one what is the formula for it because now plane is x dash so sigma x plus sigma y dash divided by two and plus sigma x dash sigma y dash by 2 okay plus tau x and what is the minimum it's a sigma 2 the formula is sigma x dx plus sigma y dash by 2 because it's a minimum hence put minus sign plus tau x y square this is also dash no? because now axis they had changed by 45 degree check 
from x it is changed 45 degree and for both the uh, states it is changed so obviously new axis system you got that is x dash and y dash now they are saying the sum of maximum and minimum so what is the sum it is nothing but sigma max plus sigma min what you will get so this two will be cancel out plus minus you will have only sigma x dash y dash because it's a half 1 by 2 1 by 2 it becomes 1 so it is this value now check what is the sigma x dash you have here it is 10 plus 10 what is sigma y dash it is minus 10 so this value should be 0 so this is the sigma of max plus sigma all questions they had asked this year uh, uh, basically fill in the blank right anyway anyway so <coughs> I should say this is the solution for this problem the cross section of thin walled beam with uniform wall thickness T shown in the figure is subjected to bending moment mx 10 newton meter if h is equal to 1 meter and t thickness uh, of the wall they have given 0 0.001 meter the magnitude of maximum normal stress in the cross section is this is also fill in the blank problem right so if you remember in bending stress bending stress system we had very nice formula that is also called engineering formula what was that it was sigma upon y is equal to m by i is equal to e by r this was the complete formula now here only see like approach how to start the problem so simple bending moment they have given for the x-axis so m for obviously this is the geometrical structure so for this geometrical structure and and that to thin wall so for thin wall you should know how to calculate value of moment of inertia i that you will get why is the distance from the neutral axis to the uh, that particular reason that is the y so sigma they are asking maximum normal stress they can say bending stress or normal stress meaning is same so basically they are asking sigma what is the sigma now m x divided by i axis into y this is the value of sigma so now check what they have given mx they have given to us that geometrical uh, you know uh, that parameters they have given length and all thickness and all so that you can calculate i x x y is obviously from the neutral axis so if you consider this is the y so from if you consider obviously because this is symmetric about x axis so you can say this is the neutral axis here because this is symmetric about x axis so obviously this will be the y so y is maybe both side it is same magnitude wise it is same how much it is h by 2 because the whole length is h anyway so we'll start this so what is our job first our job is to calculate i x x now yes or no so we'll draw this geometrical section one more time here so for our point uh, calculation point of view so this is nothing but uh, h by 2 this is also h by 2 and this is nothing but h from mid you just take this axis obviously x so <coughs> anyway for this section you just consider this is the thickness t so here also thickness will be t this is also thickness t okay consider this is section one this is two and this is what three all right check that abcd sizing something they have not given no problem hmm? if you want you can consider a b c d what is the i x x i x x will be i x x of section one plus 
आई एक्सेस ऑफ सेक्शन टू प्लस आई एक्सेक्स ऑफ सेक्शन थ्री इफ यू चेक आई एक्सेक्स ऑफ वन एंड आई एक्सेक्स ऑफ थ्री बोथ विल बी सेम ये सो नो बिकॉज इट्स अमेट्रिक अबाउट एक्स एक्सेस इट्स अमेट्रिक अबाउट एक्स एक्स ये सो नो so for the thin wall section we know thin wall section we know how to calculate i axis a higher order term you have neglect that's the mean of it huh? higher order term will be neglected That's the mean of the thin wall section that already I had discussed. Yes or no? Now, if you calculate I x x one, what uh, we are going to calculate total I x x. So we are going to take the moment of inertia about this axis here. Now this is the our axis basically here. But this section one is what away from the axis, so you can apply the parallel axis theorem. What will be the parallel axis theorem here now? That you should know. Yes or no? So I can say I x x one is nothing but first the value of uh, moment of inertia about neutral axis plus that uh, area into the perpendicular distance. Uh, I will write the uh, formula if you want. So you just consider this uh, section. For this section, what is the moment of inertia? That is the for section one I am talking. So it is B D Q by 12. What is the width here? Width is nothing. I will write simply for the section one. It is B D Q by 12. Uh, just for your understanding, plus area into perpendicular distance. What is the width for the section one? It is H by 2. What is the depth? Depth is the thickness. That is nothing but T cube. Okay. Divided by twelve plus area. What is the area? It is h by two into thickness t. That is area into what is the y? Y is this perpendicular distance from the neutral. So this is nothing but h h by two. Okay, this y, y is nothing but h by two. So you can say it is h by two. Square because it's a by square. And now check because it's a thin wall, so higher order term is thickness cube is there. Thickness is already very small, and it is power three, so it becomes almost negligible. So this part will be gone. What value you will have? You will have only check. You will have h by two into t h by two, so becomes four. So how much you will have? It is h square h h cube into t divided by two to power square four into two. That is it. This is the value of the i x x one. Similarly, i x x three also. The same thing you will have. What is that? It is nothing but uh, h cube t by eight. Now we will calculate i x x two. That is the vertical member here, because the C G of this vertical member that is two C G and neutral axis will be the same. So we will not use the parallel axis theorem here. So a y square that y will be zero for a member two, right? So only that uh, B D Q by twelve will come. So what is the B? B is nothing but the thickness, and what is the depth? It is complete h value. So I can say this is nothing but T H. Q by 12 plus obviously y is perpendicular distance will be zero from the CG so you can write directly huh? T H Q by 12. now what is the total I X S it is I X X one plus I X X two plus I X S three how much it is uh, H Q T by eight I X X two we got T H cube by 12 plus again H cube T by 
8. So what is the i x x? So it becomes what? H cube t by 4 plus h cube by t by 12. If you solve this 12, na? Uh, LCM 12, uh, 4 h cube t that is nothing but h cube t by 3 this is the total i x x now <coughs> we have to use the formula now what is the sigma <coughs> check the formula sigma is nothing but here m x by i x is m x by i x x into y in the problem itself if you check there the problem if you read here what they said the maximum normal stress so the maximum normal stress if they are saying so maximum distance from the neutral axis you have to write so this sigma max is nothing but mx what is the value of mx sorry i'm taking so much time but i'm trying to explain step by step so that clearly you 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 need to understand that's the point here okay otherwise direct answer also i can give but that is useless hmm? what is i axis i axis is nothing but h cube t divided by what is that value 3 okay into what is the y max maximum value of y that is nothing but h by 2 this is the y max so i can write y max is nothing but also h by 2 okay now so i think this will be the final value you need to you just calculate this huh? so you will get it it's a simple only 2 2 it's a 5 you can say h one will be cancel out three will come in numerator and here it is th square okay 15 divided by th square what is the sigma max it's a 15 what is the thickness check thickness is 0 0.001 and what is the h1 it's a 0 0.001 into 1 square so ultimately it will be 15 into 10 to the power 3 huh? what is the unit they had asked <coughs> newton per meter square so answer in it integer they are saying so power will not be used so use that integer value now what is that it's a 15,000 newton per square this is your answer i hope this one is clear because see problem is lengthy okay no doubt it is for two marks and here also i'm taking so much time to explain but in exam you can finish earlier also it depends only on your practice on your speed simple so this is the answer for this problem see here <clears throat> for a single degree of freedom a spring mass damper system subjected to harmonic forcing the part of motion response that decays due to damping is known as okay so <clears throat> see basically this is the harmonic forcing okay so once there is the harmonic forcing means it's a force vibration so force vibration it would be steady state response what is that a steady state response but at the same time if it is if it is free vibration so what will be the response for the free vibration so for the free vibration response will be the transient remember it okay transient response 
So because it's a forced vibration, hence it is a steady state response. So this is the correct answer. <clears throat> okay. Which of the following options is are correct? An isotropic material has infinitely many planes of material symmetry. Okay, isotropic material you know in all direction. That property must be same. Okay. In all direction, that proper material property must be same. An isotropic material has infinitely many planes of material symmetry. Okay. So that is correct. Material properties are independent of uh positions in homogeneous material so material properties are independent yeah obviously independent uh, because homogeneous means throughout the material properties are same so it is independent if it is heterogeneous then it will be uh, a dependent but homogeneous uh, material system is what independent because throughout the material properties are same okay this is also correct the stress strain graph for non-linear elastic if they said elastic material then it means uh, even though it is linear or non-linear doesn't matter that loading and unloading will be same this is wrong directly you can get this okay because see linear means this is the linear this is the linear non-linear means this is non-linear but in case of the Okay, in fact, in the fourth option, it is linear. They had taken diagram already, see. So, this is linear, okay. So, loading and unloading will be same. Why? Because they said elastic. Huh? Similarly, even if it is non-linear also, then loading and unloading will be same. Because they are saying elastic means you are in the elastic limit. That's the mean of it. If you are in, because it's a elastic material and you are in elastic limit, so loading and unloading will be same. Doesn't matter it is linear on. But here if you check loading is this and unloading is this. This is called permanent set. What it is called? Permanent set, which is also called plasticity. What it is called? Plasticity. So this diagram is what for the plasticity, plastic material you can say. Because permanently it is set, that's the reason it is not regaining the same path. Uh, so unloading is what different it is called permanent set so when for what type of material it will come for the plastic material it will come okay this diagram so obviously this is not for the elastic material uh, what is the correct diagram for the non-linear elastic material this is the correct diagram this one this is the non-linear okay this is the non-linear elastic material and obviously strain strain for the strain strain graph for the linear elastic it is already mentioned here in this diagram so this is the same loading and unloading this is the correct one so what is the correct option here correct options are you can say a b and d these are the correct options this one is correct this one is correct and this one is correct this one is wrong remember it it is MSQ, multiple select question. All right. <coughs> right. Now, <coughs> moving ahead. What they said in this problem, this it is very nice and very expected question, actually. Once we had seen the lectures for the vibration, that time discussed this graph. Proper this graph is what discussed in lectures and it was mentioned like, okay, maybe comparison they can ask okay this one and that Triska and Von misses it was two expected question uh, it was asked in exam okay anyway we had seen the different type of the uh, vibration system uh, uh, that is uh, under damped okay undamped critically damped and over damped all those things we had seen with the help of the damping coefficient or it is called damping factor it is called with the help of damping factor in 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 lectures we had seen in terms of the damping factor okay what was in that it was mentioned if it is j is greater than one okay it was mentioned if j is greater than one then it is called over damped what was called 
four damped. If j is less than one, it was called under. Just recall it. You will get it. If j is what one is is it is called critically damped. Okay, critically damped. And if j is what zero, then it is called undamped. There is no damper system. It is undamped. Now, now you have to recall the graph also at the same time because question they had asked for the graph. If you know the graph, then you will answer for this uh, problem. Okay, it's very simple one, lady. What you will do for this? We'll see the graph. Uh, okay. The, for this question, they had see by seeing this question also uh, directly, you can hit the answer. But anyway, I will try to explain the graph here. So, if you re recall that, if you recall that graph, so I would take one box, and in the box, I would take one neutral line. It will be more clear. This is what neutral line. Okay. Now, so if graph is what is started here, and it is going like this, this type of graph is called undamped. There is no. It is not decaying, so it is called undamped what it is called undamped and what for the undamped what is the j it was zero zero right this is the one graph another Right. See, it is continuously damping out. That uh, amplitude is what continuously decreasing. So this type of call, this is called under damped. What it is called under damped. And for this, j was given and j was less than one. This is under damped. Okay. Right. Over damped. Hmm? Over damped. This is called j greater than one over damped. Okay. Third, critically damped. Huh? Critically damped. So this is nothing but j is equal to one. Huh? Here, here. Here I can say j is equal to one. So that I had discussed already in lectures and all. Now <clears throat> very simple this problem. Now they are simply asking PQRS they have given and they said which one is uh, under damped, which one is over damped, um, which one is critically damped. So here only see Q is what for this Q. This is what undamped. So I can say j is equal to what zero. See, this is the damping out. So this is nothing but R. For R is what under damped. Okay, under damped means J is less than one. Hmm? And uh, this is what over damped. See, for the over damped, J is greater than one. And uh, somewhere here this is the critically damped means j is equal to one all done hmm? so uh, you can say here i will write so q is the over damp undamped this is what q okay r is the under damped this is R. Okay. S is the over damped. This is S. Okay. P 
is the critically damped all right right p is critically damped critically damped p p 3 under damped q 4 sorry undamped huh? q 4 under damped r under damped r is 2 over damped is over damped is nothing but what is the over damp it is s huh? so s is what with one simple check s is one two places we have just s3 is here s3 is here cancel both s is one here s is one just two option s1 s1 r2 r4 check r2 r2 means here r2 this is also wrong which is correct option a so correct option is what option a is correct done <coughs> it's a simple only right <coughs> all right the material has poison ratio check for this the material has poison ratio they said uh, how much 0.5 young modulus e is mega pascal percentage change in volume means they are asking when subjected to hydrostatic stress what is the hydrostatic stress hydrostatic stress is always remember it's a normal stress okay hydrostatic stress will never be a shear stress hydrostatic means water hydro water is in a static condition once it is a static condition then there is no shear when water or fluid is what flowing then only it shear stress will exist otherwise if it is not flowing condition it is a static condition then only normal stress will exist and this normal stress is nothing but pressure okay done of magnitude so this pressure is they have given and uh, this pressure value how much 10 mega pascal so percentage change anyway with this simple problem we can uh, that solution if you go for this what is the k if you remember k is bulk modulus dp divided by db by b yes or no now for this dv by v you need to calculate it is nothing but dp by k <coughs> what is k in terms of bulk modulus it is k is nothing but if you recall the formula what is k k is nothing but 2e what i remember 2e 1 minus 2 mu this is the formula so 2e 1 minus 2 check e is given young modulus and mu 2 mu 0.5 into 2 it becomes 1 so this value becomes infinite am i right um, ah, this 1 upon 0 obviously uh, k is dp by db db by okay k 2e1 minus 2 mu right so it becomes oh, okay that's the reason it is you please correct the formula no? uh, because of the less space i try to manage in this so anyway now what is the e, e is nothing but 3k 
थ्री के वन माइनस टू म्यू ओके दिस ई इज इक्वल टू थ्री के वन माइनस टू सो वट इज द के के इज नथिंग बट ई अपॉन के इज नथिंग बट ई अपॉन थ्री वन माइनस टू म्यू टू इंटू म्यू वट इज दैट पॉइजन रेशो पॉइंट फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टू बिकम्स वन वन माइनस वन बिकम्स जीरो सो इट बिकम्स इनफाइनाइट राइट इट बिकम्स इनफाइनाइट नाउ सो दिस वैल्यू डी पी डिवाइडेड बाई इनफाइनाइट बिकम्स जीरो ओके सो वट इज द परसेंटेज चेंज इन वॉल्यूम दैट इज डी बी बाई वी हंड्रेड सो मल्टीप्लाई बाई हंड्रेड इन जीरो ऑल्सो इट बिकम्स जीरो सो दिस वैल्यू इज जीरो ऑल राइट दिस इज द सोल्यूशन फॉर दिस प्रॉब्लम राइट ऑल राइट नाउ so right next problem the three dimensional stress strain relationship for isotropic material okay okay for isotropic right material so for isotropic material how many constant we have it is e and g actually one more constant is there that is poisson ratio but third one you can calculate so basically two Uh, constants for the isotropic material we have that is e and g all right now uh okay sigma x so this is the 3d stress system stress strain system uh, but for the isotropic so obviously uh, for the isotropic uh, these are the constant p q r and rest all values will be zero like for an isotropic how many constants are there 21 generally it is uh, you know 6 by 6 matrix that is 36 uh, total but for an isotropic if you talk then it becomes uh, 21 for orthotropic for um, uh, similarly for the isotropic so only constants are e and g right and obviously e and g if you know then then that poisson ratio also you can calculate so these are the constant for the isotropic material so if you write the matrix uh, p q r in terms of the mu and e and g then again you will get but if you remember you had seen because where p q and r here they have mentioned three elastic constants sigma and t represents normal and shear stresses epsilon and gamma represents normal and engineering shear strain which one of the following options uh, is correct okay let us see uh, let's see so if you apply uh, 3d stress strain system and if you write uh, equation for the hooks law uh, for the 3d huh, then this p okay in short i am just trying to write this because otherwise you can write that matrix in terms of that constant also another method we have to calculate this value so this is the simpler one that p as per hooks law uh, uh, for the 3d stress strain system that constant p is nothing but 1 minus New Q is nothing but new, and R is nothing but one minus two new divided by two. Right? These are the constants. P Q R here it is written. Done. Now <coughs> you have to check this P Q R relation. Any 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 one you can take. You start from anywhere. Uh, option A, B, C, D we have. So what you will do? You just simply you just write the left hand LHS is equal to RHS. You have to try LHS is equal to RHS. Yes or no? Now <coughs> try first one. What is Q? Q is nothing but new. What is R minus P? R is nothing but one minus. 2 new divided by 2 minus t p is divided by 2 right solve it so what will be the value uh, 1 minus 2 new so check this is what uh 1 minus 2 new by 2 minus 
वन प्लस न्यू डिवाइड बाई टू सो वॉट इज दिस वैल्यू इट्स दिस साइड इज वॉट न्यू इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस टू न्यू टेक एल्सियम सो इट इज वन माइनस टू न्यू टेक एल्सियम माइनस टू प्लस टू फाइव फोर ना सो हाउ मच इट इज टू बी टू बी कैंसिल आउट सो इट्स माइनस माइनस वन बाय फोर विच इज रॉन्ग सेकेंड ऑप्शन आर माइनस आर इज इक्वल टू पी माइनस क्यू पी माइनस क्यू बाय टू व्हाट इज द आर आर इज वन माइनस टू न्यू व्हाट इज पी वन माइनस न्यू व्हाट इज क्यू इट इज वन माइनस टू न्यू बाई टू इट इज मैस्ट एल एच एस इज इक्वल टू आर एच एस मीन दिस इज करेक्ट थर्ड ऑप्शन यू ऑल्सो कैन ट्राई क्यू इज इक्वल टू पी माइनस आर वट इज क्यू वट इज पी वट इज आर वन माइनस अगेन इफ यू सॉल्व इन डिवाइड समथिंग टू माइनस माइनस वन प्लस चेक न्यू इज इक्वल टू वन बाई टू अगेन दिस इज रॉन्ग सिमिलरली यू कैन चेक फोर्थ ऑल्सो आर इज इक्वल टू क्यू माइनस पी बाई टू आर इज इक्वल टू क्यू माइनस पी बाई टू सो वट इज द आर आर इज नथिंग बट वन माइनस टू न्यू बाई टू वट इज क्यू न्यू वट इज पी वन माइनस न्यू डिवाइड बाई टू न्यू वट इज माइनस दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग सो वन यू वन इज करेक्ट दैट इज आर इज इक्वल टू पी माइनस क्यू बाई आर इज इक्वल टू पी माइनस ऑप्शन बी इज करेक्ट done all right thank you